hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to do some examples with linear independence and dependence and make a few more conclusions about these ideas. So for example, let's ask, are the columns of the matrices linearly dependent or independent? And we'll look at these two matrices in particular. So we want to know if the columns are vectors, are those vectors linearly dependent or independent? So as a reminder, a linearly dependent set of vectors will mean that one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. An independent set will have no such linear combination. So our method for determining this is to row reduce and examine the pivot positions. If we have a column that corresponds to a free variable, this means that the vector in that column can be written as a linear combination of some of the other vectors. So looking at our first matrix, I'm going to use technology to row reduce this, and I'm getting the following matrix. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 3 in the first row, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 in the second row, and 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 3 in the third row. Then I see that we have three pivots, so the first three columns have pivot positions, and then the final two columns correspond to free variables. This tells me that those fourth and fifth columns can be written as linear combinations of the other ones. So the columns of this matrix are linearly dependent. Those two columns are redundant. Those vectors can be written as linear combinations of the first three. Okay. So let's try this on the second matrix. In this second matrix, I've just taken the rows and the columns of the first one and swapped them. This is the transpose matrix, just throwing a little terminology. So I'm going to use technology again to row reduce this. I'm getting that the first three rows have ones on the diagonal, and then I'm getting zeros in the final two rows. So here, each of my columns has a pivot position, so I have pivots in all the columns, and this means there are no free variables. Since I got no free variables, this tells me that all of the vectors are required, there isn't one that's redundant and can be written as the linear combination of the others. So we would say that the columns of this matrix are linearly independent. So it's as simple as that. We just need to row reduce, see if there are any free variables, if there are free variables, then we have a dependent system, and so our columns are linearly dependent. If we have no free variables, we have an independent system, and so our columns are linearly independent. So I want to make some comments here about the number of rows and columns. So in our first example, we had three rows and five columns and we had too many vectors. So those final two vectors were redundant. We didn't need them. We could only have three possible pivots since we only had three rows. And so it makes sense that we ended up with some free variables and a dependent and a linearly dependent set. However, in the second example, we had five rows and only three columns. And so since we had fewer columns than rows, we were able to have a pivot position in each column. So we can summarize this more generally. And I just want to go through some of that and make some conclusions. So our conclusions revolve around the question, are the vectors v1 through vn linearly independent or dependent? So I'm going to start with looking at vectors in R2. So if we have vectors v1 through vn in R2, then if we have n greater than 2, meaning we have three or more vectors, then the set is linearly dependent. So if we have two vectors in R2, this could row reduce to the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, and this would be an independent set of vectors in an independent system. So we have two vectors, they're linearly independent. However, as soon as we add a third, fourth, or fifth vector, as soon as we add one more vector, we have a dependent system and a linearly dependent set of vectors. So we have the ones on the diagonal in the first two columns, but then as soon as we get to that third vector, our third column, we have a free variable and we're in the dependent case. So anytime we're in R2 and we have more than two vectors, we're going to be dependent. I just want to mention that we could be dependent with two vectors. So being two vectors doesn't guarantee independence, 
So we could just have a one in the first column and a second column that was a free variable. So this would be dependent with two vectors as well. But the idea is that if we have three or more, we're always dependent. Okay, let's think of this again in R3. So if we have a set of vectors in R3, meaning we'll have three rows on our matrices, then the set is linearly dependent anytime we have more than three vectors. So with only three vectors, we could be independent. We just have ones on the diagonal. That's a pivot position in each column. But as soon as we add that fourth vector, we are dependent. So that fourth vector will correspond to a free variable. And so it'll always be a linearly dependent set of vectors. Now, I just wanna make my same caveat that three vectors could be dependent. They don't have to be independent. So we could have ones in the first two columns and then the third column be a free variable. And this would be dependent. But the idea is anytime we have more than three vectors, we'll always have a linearly dependent set because there will always be free variables. Okay, so hopefully you can see how this works for R2 and R3. And we could continue this argument for higher dimensions. So we could do any Rn. And rather than go through those all individually, we're going to summarize this as a theorem. So if we have a set of vectors v1 through vn, and they're in Rm, so this would have a matrix of m by n, there are m rows and n columns, then the set is linearly dependent whenever n is greater than m. So if we have more columns than we do rows, we will always have a linearly dependent set of vectors. So let's unpack this. The matrix dimensions using these vectors would be m by n. So we'd have m rows, since each of those vectors are elements of Rm, and we'd have n columns, since that's how many vectors we have. Now, whenever we have n greater than m, meaning we have more columns than we do rows, we're going to have a linearly dependent set. And that's because we will always have a free variable if there are more columns than rows. And so we'll always have a dependent system or a linearly dependent set of vectors. All right, okay, so that's just a little more to unpack about linear independence and dependence. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.